guys, my name is Imogen, I am 20 years old and I'm currently studying Geography with German at the London School of Economics. Now, as promised, I said I was going to do a video with some other LSE students and here they are today. So I am joined by Katie, Akba and Saatchi. Um, they are going to tell you, hopefully in a minute, what courses they do. And hopefully if you are a prospective student, then this video will be useful for you. So I'm Katie and I'm studying BSc International Relations and History. I'm Akbar, I'm studying BSc Management. I'm Sachi and I'm studying BSc Finance. So obviously we've started LSE, what, a couple of months ago now? Um, have you found it a big jump between sixth form study and uni? Um, I think workload-wise, yes, there's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, but content-wise, it's not particularly difficult. As I said before, it's just there's a lot of it. But one point I did find was that it was quite a big jump to come up the gap year and then adjust back into such a competitive environment with a high workload. Just coming from that kind of freeness of a gap here back into working uh, however many hours a day. So if you're on a gap year right now, I'd advise you to do a bit of revision <laughs> over summer and uh, just so that when you, look, you get here, you don't have to spend, say, the two to three weeks I did just readjusting to academic life. Yeah, I definitely found it was a bit of a shock when you, when you jump straight in after a gap year. It's like, oh, where did all of this come from? <laughs> So one thing that I think is very controversial is how we're finding online classes because obviously in a normal year you wouldn't have online classes. Who knows what university next year is going to look like but certainly for next term we're looking at more online work. Um, how do you guys find this? So for me I am not a fan of it at all. Uh, <laughs> it really disengages you from university life as in I'll give you an example I'm only in campus two to three times a week and normally be in four days easily. Um, so it is a case of, yes, you're learning, but from a Zoom call and a PowerPoint slide and pre-recorded videos, it just isn't the same as... It's not the same experience. It isn't the same as um, being, in, being in a lecture theatre and yeah. obviously meeting people before and after. Mm. Having said that, I am grateful that we have got kind of socially distanced classes going yeah. on. Um, so we do get the opportunity to, to, yes, go into campus at some point. It's not all online. How are you guys finding lockdown in London? Because obviously we started uni and stuff was kind of opening up again and now we're back in lockdown. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I guess it's a little depressing not being able to yeah. live the typical like first year life, going out to bars and restaurants with your friends. But I think on the bright side, being in London, there's so there's obviously there's so many sites you can go and see yeah. where you can just walk and you don't necessarily have to go inside anywhere, so you can just walk and wear a mask if you want to. So that's nice. Um, and obviously we've got prep, which is which is nice as well. We can still go and uh, have our coffee every day um, yeah. on the way to Thank campus. Thank goodness for the prep free time. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like when I tell you every single person in our halls, I'm pretty certain has a prep subscription. Every single person at LSE, there you go, Casey's got it here. <laughs> every single person at LSE has a prep subscription. I'm not lying to you. So actually, had you been to London before? Yeah, I came here as a student in 2014, I think. Oh wow, so that was a while ago. Yeah. How did you find coming here as a student? Because obviously it isn't, as that says, like it's not a normal year. Yeah. Have you found it a big adjustment or...? No, not really. For me, because uh, before I came, and I was in like super strict lockdown for like the longest time. Okay. So it was, wasn't too much of a shift for me. It was like, well, hey, stuff's open. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah stuff is more <laughs> open here than back home. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what are your favourite things about your course so far? Katie, do you want to start? Okay, so for me, for history, um, for one of the modules I do, HY113, I think it's the pace of it. Um, every week we're learning about a new part of the world that I probably haven't learned about at all, like in high school education. Um, so far we've already, we learned about like partition in India, we learned about the Middle East, we've learned about Japan, China, and then from the IOS like side of things, we, we look at things that are very, very relevant to modern day, like. Last week we were talking about the, the US elections, we talk about like how 9-11 like, impacted um, the world today. We do look at how like like very modern things, which I think is, it's which is relevant. nice. Yeah, yeah, very relevant yeah. things yeah. to our world. So it's been two things mainly. Um, one thing I do love about my course is the application to the real world. I mean, mm. whenever we're in a lecture or a class, there's always a link back to a company that used, say, this method mm -hmm. or an application of it in the real world and a real world example. For me, I would say the department is the best part of my course. Uh, the, the department of staff are super helpful and super sweet. Like my program manager, she's like really informal with us and she just organizes Zoom catch ups and we just have a friendly chat for like a couple of 10 15 minutes. And it's, it's really nice and they're very supportive and they're trying their best to get the group, the BSE finance group to mingle with each other. And 
also just create a homing environment for us all. Yeah, I, found so I would that say it's well, the department. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought that when I came here, all the teachers they'd be super strict, super smart. They'd expect you to know all the answers to everything. Yeah. They're actually they're so chill. They're so nice. They're pretty chill. Yeah. yeah. Especially during COVID, I found yeah, that the support so, would be so incredible cool. from LSE. Yeah. We're constantly getting emails about support systems and things that are in place. Um, honestly, could not recommend enough. Dare I ask, but we're going to talk about freshers. Um, so obviously freshers this year looked completely different to a normal year, but how did you guys find it? Because I think we did all have very different freshers weeks because yeah. stuff was more open and you could mix with your course when freshers just happened. Yeah. Um, so yeah, how did you find it? It's, it was different, definitely different. <laughs> it was different to what I think you expect a normal freshers to be, obviously. Yeah. With like like clubs were not open but bars were open so mm -hmm. um, there were a few people that I spoke to pre coming to LSE that I found that were on my course so I went out with a few of those and then I met some people in my classes and I went out with those people so you said you spoke to some people before you came yeah. is that like on Instagram or what's that like in WhatsApp groups and yeah, stuff? yeah well I found some of them on the student room oh um, I love them yeah as always um, just a, a, a range I'd say if you if you find out that you're coming to LSE mm -hmm. look on Facebook uh, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, anything you can think of, there's probably a group that you can be included in and mm -hmm. the more people you speak to the better I think. Did you guys also speak to people before you came to LSE? Absolutely, I mean for me I kind of understood um, that because it being COVID year it's going to be harder to meet mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So for the first part of Freshers Week I was actually self-isolating so I would <laughs> just see everyone have um, fun in the kitchen and just socialise with everyone else but I would be stuck in the room. Uh, but I did make up for that in the second week, first week of uni. <laughs> I had a freshers week in the first week of uni. Yeah. And it, it was quite fun, I would say, because I found my people who would just be up for just having a late night and getting together in the kitchen and having fun. So talking all things social life, um, do you, have you guys decided to join any societies this year? Uh, personally for myself, I haven't this year. I was planning on doing it. Um, I wanted to join, I think, drama society. There's a cocktail society. But I think um, a lot of societies this year, they've, uh, they've had to be put online, they're, yeah. they're all on Zoom and I thought, do I want another how many hours of Zoom every week? And <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think going into second year, should they be um, in real life again in person, I think I will definitely join a few societies. Yeah. But this year I just thought, is it worth it to pay the membership and just have to be on Zoom all the time? So. And the societies are trying really hard, but yeah, obviously like... Yeah. As with so many things, it's really, really difficult to adapt certain things yeah. to online. Um, but Aqua, you've joined some societies, right? And found I, they're okay? Yeah, I have. As in, um, it's also linked to my point that in a COVID year, um, the way you can meet more people is by yeah. putting in, say, the effort. Yeah. So I joined societies, um, I've joined kind of academic focused ones and also sport ones. Mm -hmm. So I'm part of LSE's Boxing Society. I'm also a member of the Hedge Fund Society, Private Equity Society. Venture Capital Society. <laughs> um, so these are, these are all kind of industries in finance that I'd maybe like to kind of, I've interned in them, but maybe like to work in in the future. Yeah. But the sport ones have been kind of, for well, pre um, the UK lockdown, we were able to say train in parks and socially distance and meet people. So they have been kind of the only society that has stayed almost normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Sachi, you joined sports society. Yeah, you? I joined the football society mm -hmm. and I went to a couple of training sessions. Um, but I, went, I also went to a social to a bar with one of them. They were quite nice people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the football society has been like now there's no training anymore because mm -hmm. of lockdown, but it's still more or less the same, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I talked in the last video about there being quite a big divide between mass and well, the more mass economic side of courses here and then the more social science courses here. Have you guys found that there's a stigma around your course? Because obviously being a geography student, all I get asked is, oh, do you just do colouring in? Well, unless I'm colouring in my reading, I've not been doing any colouring in so far. Katie, have you found with IR and history that there's been stigma? I actually, I don't think there has been. No one said anything to me about IR in history. <laughs> Who does management? And um, so. for any LSE students who are watching, you will know exactly what we're about to talk about. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, personally, I've not really kind of met any stigma other than a, kind okay. of a few like people trying to make a joke. Um, but the truth, truth be told, is, and there is a running joke within LSE that management students don't actually work that hard, that it's not a real degree, <laughs> or etc. Um, but yes, there is a stigma against us, um, but I don't think it's well founded in the sense that we do a lot of similar modules to the economics guys yeah. we also get spring week sunday internships and we also like kind of ultimately in tip talk about kind of results mm -hmm. um land jobs in the same industry so um the difference between my degree in economics is just that it's a lot more kind of applied and a lot more real world 
rather than theoretical. Um, so yeah, there is a stigma, but it, it doesn't really affect me. If that makes yeah, sense. yeah, fair enough. And Sachi? For me, I wouldn't say there's any stigma. No, you do finance. Yeah. <laughs> if you're at the London School of Economics and you're doing economics or finance, hats off to you. Like, <laughs> it's hard to get in and it's hard to do the work. I think. So thank you. <laughs> you're welcome, Sachi. <laughs> Would you say that LSE is just full of super smart people? Obviously we have to get certain grades to get in here, but do you ever get any imposter syndrome? Um, do you ever feel like you're the odd one out, you don't get things, you're not smart enough to be here, that sort of thing? Um, it's quite weird in that I thought when I arrived here, everybody, as I said, would be so smart, be working 24 seven, and you get here and everyone is exactly the same as you. They're, they're very, very normal and down yeah. to earth, I think, which is like something you don't necessarily expect. Um, Obviously, every, I think everyone has times where they sit in class and they think, oh, I, I don't deserve to be here, I'm not smart enough to be here, but then yeah. I think if you go and talk to people on your course, I think you'll realise that a lot of people at some point will feel the same way. So That's very true. Yeah. When I was at home, I definitely found that yeah. not being here was quite a big barrier because I couldn't just talk to people yeah. about the fact that I was like, I do not have a clue about what is going on right now and I do not know what this reading is meant to be about. Um, yeah, Akbar, what did you find? Because you also had a gap year, right? I did. So once I uh, did get to LSE, it, it is noticeable that everyone here is at least fairly intelligent. Mm -hmm. And in terms of imposter syndrome, for me it was slightly different because, as you said, we both been on a gap year, so kind yeah. of coming here after a gap year, which like I did to get to LSE, um, it was weird being here. So the, for the first two weeks, for example, I didn't really want to be in campus because I just kind of processing uh, being here mm -hmm. but it does fade away because ultimately as we said the teachers are supportive there is a True. fair bit of competitiveness inside the uni but aside from that everyone's really friendly and again in the same boat you are yeah that's true if you've got in you deserve to be here and also the staff like if you reach out to them and say like i really don't get something they are so helpful yeah. i mm -hmm. genuinely cannot stress that enough so actually did you find that you had imposter syndrome or you struggled when you first got here at all uh, for the first few weeks yeah i did feel like don't deserve to be here, don't belong mm -hmm. here, not getting anything, what's going on in the classes. Mm -hmm. But I guess like once I started speaking to the people in my course, I realized that everyone's in the same boat. Like everyone is, everyone feels the same imposter syndrome. So like mm -hmm. it was, I got used to it and I moved faster. Yeah. And the final question, which I hope will be useful to all of you watching is to what advice would you give to somebody who wants to apply to LSE or is considering LSE as one of their university choices? Um, I would say personal statement, personal statement, personal statement. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say the same. Ultimately, yeah. um, of course your grades matter and your predicted grades. Mm -hmm. And again, whether what's kind of a higher point is whether this is the right place for you. Because I feel a lot of people apply to LSE because they understand the prestige behind it and how yeah. good a university it is. But you have to, again, visit the uni when you're allowed to mm -hmm. and look at whether it is the right place for you because ultimately that's the most important decision. Mm -hmm. You're going to be spending three years here regardless of say the opportunity cost and in intense what it means for your career um you have to see whether it's the right university for you but if you do believe that's a factor then i would say i put in a lot of work to your personal statement because that's the biggest thing else you look at and how they make their decision ultimately whether to give you an offer or not as well as work hard for your a levels of course yeah. and Sachi, sorry Akbar was saying if you can't visit the campus what because obviously you didn't visit the campus before coming here right no i didn't so how did you know that lse was the right place for you so for me i would say lse was the best uni i got into but it's also so true for me as well yeah it's the best uni i got into so there was no doubt about coming to lse and also because it was in london was a big selling point for me yeah because i wanted to study in a city mm -hmm. like a big city so that is all i'm going to ask these guys today thank you so so much to all three of you for being on my channel and for answering my questions and for giving up your friday afternoon which is when we're filming this hopefully this video has been useful for all of you who are considering applying to lse or those of you who have already applied and are waiting to hear whether you've got in i will see you next time with a new video Bye. Bye. <laughs>